If you are building applications with generative AI, you are probably also thinking about agentic frameworks and how to leverage them in your apps. But being the diligent developer I know you can be, you are also on to make sure that your agents don't accidentally access or expose sensitive data. So in our next few minutes together, you will learn how to build a simple RAG agent using LangChain and how to secure it to avoid your data from falling into the wrong hands. Let's go. I don't know about you, but I like to learn concepts by looking at the code implementation. So let's start by grabbing our simple application. I already cloned it from this repository over here. We have a bunch of other RAG applications you can take a look later and see how they implemented. But the one we're going to focus right now is this one, the LangGraph Agentic JS. This application is written in TypeScript for Node.js. And here are two of the main components that I need you to pay attention to right now. First, the asset docs. There are sample markdown that are going to use for the LLM to provide context. We have a public doc and a private doc that we're going to use for this demonstration. And the index.ts, that's the main entry point for our application. And in it, we define the RAG pipeline. Yes, I know there are other folders in here, but we'll come back to them later. Before diving into code, let's talk about retrieval augmented generation or RAG. In the simplest terms possible, a RAG is a system that will interact with a database to obtain more information and incorporate that information into the answers you give to a user. For that to happen, we have basically four steps for after getting the question from the user. Read the documents, put the documents into a database, usually a vector store in the format of embeddings, check the user's permissions to filter the documents the user can access, and finally, the large language model to formulate an answer based on the user's documentation retrieved and the question from the user. And that's it. Now that you understand the steps in the pipeline, let's go back to the code and see the implementation of these steps. Here we have a user that will perform the query. Then the document reading so that we can store their documents into the vector store in the format of embeddings. And for that, we are using the OpenAI embeddings API and this model to create said embeddings. Then we have the FGA Retriever class that will filter out the documents based on the user's permission and the FGA model. Now, this class is part of our Auth0 AI JavaScript SDK that is currently in alpha release and is going to be part of the product called Authogen AI that is upcoming right now. You can download the SDK alpha release from GitHub like we did for this sample application. And you can already start using it and testing it out. And if you have any questions or feedback, make sure to drop them below. Now that the spiel about the upcoming product is over, you can think of the retriever as a security guard. It looks at all of the documents in your vector store and makes sure that your user only sees the documents it has permission to access. The way that FJ Retriever makes a decision is by using the build query function over here that queries out the FGA store. The user is identified by the user ID, the object is the document, and is the document ID that we use, and the permission is the permission of the user for said document. So for example, in here, we have an user that is able to view the information of a given document. We are going to see all of this as the management topo part of our dashboard in just a second. After all of this, you may be wondering, where is the lane chain? Am I right? And here it is. Let me show you. The retrieval agent is a class that configures the LangGraph retrieval agent and uses FJ retriever and the OpenAI model to answer the user's question. LangGraph allows us to build agents that can handle complex tasks, including RAG applications. It has advanced features like workflows, persistent context, and streaming support. So basically, this set up our LLM for success, both with the filter based on the user's permissions from the FGA side, and then with LangGraph that will take care of the LLM side. 
Finally, we have the query over here that is going to pose, uh, that we are going to pose as the user. I've been saying FJ this, FJ that for quite some time now. So let's take a look at that. Fine-grained authorization or FGA provides granular access control. And in our case, that's exactly what we need to avoid users accessing data they shouldn't have access to. We are going to use the all zero FGA to store all of the access control policies for our users and our documents. Once you create your account, you will end here in the main area of the dashboard. So let me show you the easiest way to set up everything for the sample app. First, we need to create a client. To do that, let's go to settings and then scroll all of the way down and create client. If you are with your screen zooming like I am, you might need to scroll up to give your client a name. And for this one, let's call it link graph and then say that this is a wrap to make it easy to identify later. And so I also want to do is give it all of the client permissions. So I'm going to click this three. So the first one, we allow our clients to create a new model in our store. The second one, we will allow it to write and delete two posts. And finally, read and carry will let them carry out the information of access for my users and documents. Don't forget to click create. Once you do, you are going to get information that you need to drop in your .m file on your application. So let's do that. Also, let me hide my secrets because I don't want you to see them. Now I'm going to copy all of this and put it on my .m file. And then I can click continue and you can see all of the examples so that you can use the credentials to call the APIs and make interact with it. Uh, you can even look at the Node.js or the Python SDK version if you want to. But for now, let's just click done and move on. So now that our client is successfully created and we gave it all of the permissions, this will allow us to interact with the dashboard through the API. Okay, now this is where the magic happens. Let's run our FJ init script. npm run FGA init. That's our script. And now that it's run, everything is magically set up for you. Oh, don't believe me? Here, let me show you. This is script that lives inside here connects to the dashboard through the APIs and in this case, our SDK, so I don't have to make API calls. And then it kind of does everything for me. First, it creates the model that we are going to use that defines our user and our objects, which are our documents, both public and private, and also creates, creates our first relation tuple that is in here. So basically, this relation tuple defines that all users, so user star, can view the document of public doc, which is the ID of the document. So it can view all of the information in the public document. Let's check that in the dashboard. So going back to the dashboard, I can go to Model Explorer. And in here, once I refresh it, this is the old version. It should show me the updated version. And so this outlines my model where I have an user and I have docs and users can be either owners or viewer of said docs. Finally, let's go into tuple management and see our first tuple. And I have the same information here, user star, which is all the users, and then the object that is the public doc and that all users can see the public doc. Let me also say this that even though I use this script here to create my model and tuple, you can also create both of them through the interface of the dashboard. 
I like using the script just because it can get pretty tedious to do this configuration by hand every time. Now that we have set up, we can run our application for the first time, shall we? Let's go back to my code editor, VS Code, and let me clean out the result real quick. And now we can run our app. And to run this, you can read through the readme if you want to, but basically we just need to do npm run start. And that should run through our rag pipeline and give me an answer back based on the query that we have already set up in the index.ts file. So in here, we get an answer. I couldn't find any specific information regarding the forecast for Zico. Pretty neat because as a user, I don't have access to any of the forecast information or the financial information. To make that happen, let's go back to the dashboard so I can show you how to create a new tuple. So you can add a tuple and then you can give this user information that you need. So here I want user and here I already have an example, but, for example, but I can give myself the permission to see the private document. So I'm going to use user jazz, which is the same user that I have set up in my index.ts file. And then the object, I can select either user or doc. For this case, we need doc. And I'm going to enter the key, the ID for the document, which is private doc, and then relation viewer. Even though I have owner, viewer should be enough for me to get the forecast through the rag pipeline. So if I scroll down a little bit and I have zoomed in, so that doesn't help me, but there is a button here that you are not seeing that basically that says save. Let me zoom out a little bit and add tuple. And now you can see here all the other tuples as well. So I'm going to close this out so you can see it. So now Jazz has also access to the private doc, not only the public doc. So let's run our application again. And if I go back to my VS Code and just showing you that this is the user that I'm using just here, and I want to pose my query again, that is defined here, show me the forecast for Zico. And if I run this again, after a little while, it shows me the forecast for the revenue of Zico. So the forecast for Zico for the fiscal year 2025 is bearish. Oh my God, not so good. <laughs> Securing reg applications can be tough without the right tools. That's why we are launching Auth for Gen AI and making videos like this one. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, you can join us at the Auth Zero Lab Discord server and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the comments below with questions or concerns, and I'll catch you on the next one.